Welcome back, Gadgeteers. So, an interesting topic that I thought we would discuss, and I'm very curious to get your opinion on it and see how you feel. So, Microsoft is going to begin putting ads in Windows 11 in the Start menu. As far as I know, Windows 11 was already putting ads in, and just so you know, there are ways to turn that off, and I'll include a couple of links. Uh, that I went and looked at that will help you uh, make setting changes in Windows 11 that will shut off at least some of the ads. One of my big problems with having to make all these changes, because it is a lot of work, is that there's no guarantee that the setting changes are going to stay there when you do an update. Why would Microsoft want you to be able to turn all these features off and then guarantee in the next update or the next Windows version uh, that they will stay off. So a little concerned about that. Might be a lot of work for nothing. Hard to say. A couple of the YouTubers I watched seemed very incensed that Microsoft would consider putting ads in the start menu. I don't see it that way. Um, I'm kind of on the other side of the coin. The reason I say that is the version of Windows 11 that is going to have these new ads placed is the quote unquote free version. I know many of you will say, well, it's not free. It comes with my computer. I paid for it, didn't I? Yeah, technically you did. Um, at least a small part of it is Windows 11 on your new computer. And the other way you're paying is with your personally identifiable information that is sold to other companies so that they can try to get you more custom tailored ads to hopefully trigger you into buying something. And unfortunately, it does work a lot of the time, but it does slow down workflow. And if you're working in Windows 11, that can be really annoying. You can get the professional version and of course you have to pay for that. You have to get the license. The upside is you won't see ads. The downside is you have to pay for it. So that's something you would have to think about. Personally, from what I've seen, um, these new ads will have a very minimal effect on workflow. I think that's reasonable. Um, I'm not so concerned about what's being added to the start menu as I am about what else is going to be added in the near future. So if this works for Microsoft, and they're very careful about this, they're rolling it very slowly out the door. As a matter of fact, it's not even on the uh, Windows that you're probably running. You have to have the beta installed, and then you would see ads in the beta version so they're they're really being very tricky nice and slow very careful let the furor die down and then after a while people get used to it we could start sneaking in some more ads from a different angle like they do anyway so you really unfortunately can expect more ads and it's not just windows 11 it can be your your tv your tablet i've noticed with my fire tv if i pause something for long enough it used to show pictures that i put up now in addition to the pictures the first thing that comes up is an advertisement and i just basically ignore it immediately so I don't even know what the advertisement was for there was this man holding a baby you know looking at the baby longingly and I didn't even know what the ad was for because I didn't want to know I didn't want to look at it um, so yeah it's not going to be just Windows 11 so you can be angered by Windows 11 but I would be more angered by Fire TV that you know, you paid for with the expectation that you wouldn't get advertisements. Um, Amazon Premium. 
supposedly the content there is supposed to be without ads. That's the whole idea, right? That's why you're paying for it. That's going to change pretty soon. What is changing already is that Amazon is moving much of its content over to a new service they created called Freebie. I don't know if you've noticed that. So things that you used to be able to watch that didn't have any ads in it, like Columbo, for example. Love that show. Now you have to watch it in Freebie, and there are ads. So they took it out of Prime. Technically, you know, you're still watching things on Prime without ads. We're just taking content away and putting it on Freebie. That really irritates me. So this Windows 11 thing, I consider minimal, provided it doesn't cause a block or issue with your workflow. This really isn't anything new. Canonical did it with Ubuntu Pro, I believe it's called. So in the terminal, you would get these ads. Some people call them plugs. Either way, it's in the middle of your content that you're reading through carefully for a command you just ran. I have a problem with that, but if you are running Linux, why would you run the version that is made by a for-profit company? And most people will say, well, it's because it's the easiest Linux version to run and it's um, I'm able to understand it more and there's less that I have to do after installing Linux. And I get all of that, but there are some great additions out there known as distributions or distros that you can check out that are just as good, but they're not from a paid for-profit company. So you might want to consider that. Will Linux come to save the day and sweep away all the ads and, you know, get you out of Windows 11 hell? No. I'm sorry, but it won't. Um, if you've been a Linux user, you know it's really a tinkerer's operating system. You have to be willing to accept a certain level of problems and errors. Case in point, I put an SD card into the uh, my reader, which is a USB reader, and it read it fine, and I was transferring files, and all of a sudden, after about an hour, it was gone. I no longer could see it in the menu. So in the file manager, I unplugged it from the USB port, plugged it back in, plugged back in the SD card. It still didn't work. I thought, well, I really don't want to reboot my system for something like this. I mean, it's, it's very simple. So I unplugged the um, card reader, USB card reader from the hub that it was plugged into and plugged it in directly into the computer, it started working fine. Even though these ports that are on the front of my computer are flaky, it worked fine and I was able to finish what I was doing. That's the kind of tinkering I'm talking about. You can't just expect Linux to all of a sudden save everybody and do everything that they need to do. As a matter of fact, if you ask me, Microsoft is pushing people to move over not so much to Linux, although some have, but more to Mac OS and the MacBooks. And they're seeing that. They know that that's happening. So they're looking to come out with uh, MacBooks that are increasingly less expensive, like the M1 MacBook Air that you can get for less than $700. That's a really good deal, and their OS doesn't send ads to you, so that's a major plus. So don't expect Linux to come and save the day, and I'm not trying to discourage you from trying it out. Um, I love Linux. Here I am talking about ads in Microsoft 11, and I thought, when was the last time I ran Windows 11? I've got it on my little computer that's in the front room connected to my TV, I have only been on it once or twice. It's very utilitarian. I use it so that I can plug in a USB 
and I'll have media on there that I want to watch. I've taken a lot of my Blu-ray discs and made copies that are smaller, and I can just put them in with my thumb drive, and I've got access to those movies. There are some movies, like Star Trek 1 through 6, that I can watch over and over and over. And one of the things I really like to do is play a movie while I'm working, as long as it doesn't distract from my work too much or the work is mundane. I really enjoy that. I'll just sit in the office and I'll go ahead and watch a movie while I'm working. Um, so I prefer to have my own copies. The other thing that stinks is you have to subscribe to another service, Paramount Plus, if you want to watch Star Trek content. I usually only do that for a few months out of the year because then um, I can watch uh, Strange New Worlds, which is a newer Star Trek series that I really like. And once I go through the 10 or so episodes of the season, I usually just cancel it again because I have a lot of the other content, uh, original series. I have the animated series back here. You probably can't see it, but it's sitting on my shelf. Uh, somebody got that for me for a gift. I'm kind of getting off the beaten path here. One thing that might shock you, you know, a lot of people are saying, if Microsoft doesn't get rid of these ads, I'm leaving Microsoft. Okay, you're leaving Windows. How much money do you think Microsoft actually makes from Windows? Take a guess. Think about the number in your head and come up with it. Okay, what'd you come up with? If you said $22 billion, you would be right. And that sounds like an enormous amount of money, doesn't it? Well, I mean, for me, I, $22 billion, yeah, I could do I could do quite a lot with that, I think. But no, um, it is not their top revenue generator. OK, their top revenue generators are their cloud service, Azure or Azure or however you want to say it, which comes in at 80 billion dollars annually. And Microsoft 365, where they have Office and some other applications, which comes in at 49 billion dollars. I'm not going to say they don't care about the desktop market but and i'm not going to say they seed the battle and say hey we lost that's it you know no not at all none of that but what i am saying is they know giving this operating system to you for free they have a lot more latitude how willing is this customer to put up with ads especially when they just bought a new computer and say, you know what, I'm really angry. You've got all these ads on Windows 11 I didn't know about. I'm going to switch over to Mac OS or Linux. So on one side of the coin, Mac OS, it's more expensive. That's just the way it is. It's more expensive. The hardware is better. There are pros and cons to Mac OS. I wouldn't call it better than Windows 11 as far as usefulness, but... Uh, in some ways it is better but there would be new things for the user to get used to new hardware limitations new software limitations all that stuff you would have to get used to in the linux camp we're really talking about a major change here think of all the people you know and when i'm talking to the people who know linux i am not talking about your other friends who use linux i'm talking about mothers and fathers brothers and sisters friends um, just ask them, how often have you installed an operating system? Most of them are going to say, well, I don't know what you're talking about. What does that mean? Because they had never done it. So getting them to create the USB bootable drive, uh, getting them to put it in the, in the USB slot easy, but rebooting, figuring out how to boot from the USB drive because it isn't set up that way by default. I prefer dual boots whenever I set up uh, Linux on a system. On this system that I'm on, I have Linux on a separate 
SSD and I have Windows on its own SSD. I don't mix and match, so I don't have to split the size of a drive up. I have a 16 terabyte external drive that I've formatted with NTFS and both of my systems can get access to it. So if I need to get something from my Linux folder, Linux folder, Linux operating system and plop it somewhere on an NTFS drive that I can get from Windows, no problem. I just move it over while I'm in Linux, reboot. I think it's the F12 key on my keyboard. I don't know. I just kind of figure it out as I go along. And then I can select Windows and boot my computer into Windows. Ironically, my computer is still on Windows 10. My computer, my media computer that's out with my TV is on Windows 11. So that's the only system I have in this house that is Windows 11. And I'm only using it to consume media. I, You know, there's nothing else that I do with it. You've seen probably quite a few videos from me using Mac OS lately. I kind of go through phases, so it varies, but nothing can get me away from Linux. I use Mac OS and in some ways it's absolutely wonderful, but to do something as simple as make uh, NTFS read and write so that I can write to, an NTFS external drive, which is the Microsoft Windows file system. It's kind of a pain in the butt. It didn't take long. For me, it was pretty easy to figure out. Five or ten commands, I was in business. However, for the average user, no way. No way. Not possible. Keep in mind, y'all out there, 99% of the population has never installed an operating system in their life. They get the computer, they turn it on, they click through all the steps that they have to do, and hopefully they're smart enough to turn off all the uh, privacy settings. Well, let me rephrase that. Turn off Microsoft's invasion of your privacy. So we don't want those things on. Um, you know, people put tape over their cameras. They're worried about what might be seen, right? Curious to see how you feel about it and what your personal impression is. Um, if you've got a dog in the hunt, let me know. Does this irritate you? Can you live with it? Do you simply not care and it's fine? Which is another possibility. Do you know of anybody that's complaining about it? And if so, I really think you could put them at ease and say, this isn't a big thing. Now, it might roll like a snowball down the hill into a big thing. Um, you know, give it a year or two or a couple of years. And unfortunately, I think that's gonna be the way it is for basically all services that we use, unfortunately. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. I had a good time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time with Fast Gadgets.